please like and subscribe if you like the video and i also stream here on youtube if that interests you thank you so much for watching enjoy Lies of P is the newest Souls-like game out in the wild, and it has some people deeming it as the hardest Souls-like ever. Well, here I am to quickly explain why it is not the hardest Souls-like game and why all Souls games are fairly easy. Dark Souls, Elden Ring, Sekiro, Bloodborne, even Lords of the Fallen or Code Bane, and now Lies of P. All these games are difficult, some more than others, and all offer builds that simply make things easier. Lies of P is no exception to these rules. The first thing I want to get across is the difference between the games. Dark Souls is hard, but it's not hard in the way Sekiro is. You can't play Sekiro the same way you play Dark Souls. The dodging and waiting for an opportunity isn't as effective in Sekiro where you have to block, jump, and counter in quite a faster flow than Dark Souls. I have seen people complain about both the dodging and blocking for Lies of P. Dark Souls has rolling as its main defensive option. Sekiro has parrying instead. Lies of P has, well, both? This new Souls-like has less iframes than Dark Souls or Elden Ring, and it also has a smaller parrying window than Sekiro, so people are confused as to what they should do. The answer? Both. The flow in Lies of P, I'd say, is faster than Dark Souls and slower than Sekiro. The game's bosses have super drawn out attacks where they charge it for a long time and then instantly smack your face in. Then, you face some bosses which throw a barrage of attack at you just to instantly decimate your entire HP bar. And don't get me wrong, Dark Souls has someone like Sister Frida, with three faces and crazy attacks, and we all know I am Melania. Blade of Mikola, who is considered by many the hardest boss in all Souls games, and even straight up unfair and badly designed, which I disagree with. But why say all this? Why mention how difficult and unfair these games can be? Because said things, in fewer words, the difficulty in these games are, in all honesty, not that high. Lots of games see difficulty as more HP equal harder content. All these aforementioned games do not. In Souls-like games, the difficulty lies in the relation between you and each boss. The bosses aren't hard and unfair because they simply are that. No, they feel as such because you suck and need to get good, as they say. But isn't this unfair? Why do I need to be as good as the next person when I am simply not? Because that's just how things work. A lot of people escape reality through games. I'd say Souls-like games are for people who want to face life and use these games to prove themselves that they can. You can play other games and set them to easy mode and that's it, you can chill. Souls games don't offer that option, or at least not in such a cheap way. You want to beat a boss? Try again and again for hours until you do it, until you either become good enough to do it or lucky enough to get the perfect attack pattern for you to win. You don't want to be good? Level up until you simply deal 8 quadrillion damage with each hit. Oh, but that's gonna take you time. You won't simply set the game's difficulty to easy. No, instead you'll be farming souls for hours on end until you earn the right to become stronger than the boss by sheer leveling. You also don't want to farm souls until you are level 600? Well, use an OP build. You know the deal, don't you? Nothing is free in these games, so you'll have to run around the map gathering resources, the right equipment, the minimum required level to properly use the build, all to eventually have the ability to instantly delete 80% of the boss's HP bar in 10 seconds. People call out those who use OP builds, or even those who farm until they are overleveled in order to beat a boss. The thing is, all of these people, the ones who choose these paths, did the same thing those who spent hours learning the boss patterns and grew accustomed to using their weapons of choice did. They all spent hours in order to obtain what they needed to beat what was stopping them. And in the end, they all earned it. The only exception would be cheating, because even killing the bosses with a friend's help has its merits. Relying on friends, which as everyone should know, friends are there to help you, even when you think you should give up. I mentioned how I disagree with the idea that Malenia is unfair. This is simply because every one of her attacks gives you more than enough time to react to them. Waterfowl Dance, which is this attack, is completely dodgeable. You of course can't just do it the first time you fight her, and it's gonna take a lot of time before you can properly dodge it every time she uses it. But in the end, she's just as fair as every other boss. I'm not going to dissect her every move here, because this video is not made for that. However, I might do it one day. Once you learn the patterns in Lies of P, once you get yourself into the right pace, for the game, once you stop doubting yourself and decide to use both blocking and rolling, once you get good, the game loses its difficulty. 
For me, the hardest boss in Lies of P was the Door Guardian. Yes, that one. If you have played the game, you know how stupid this sounds. And honestly, I don't know what my problem is, but for whatever reason, I simply can't just not play like the dumbest person on earth when I'm fighting him. Nah, I do know the reason. To reach this boss, you have to walk for what I consider an unnecessary distance. And the strategy to kill the boss, well, strategy, is to break his stance and get a repost. Do this two or three times and the boss is dead. However, I refuse to do what the game developers want me to do in basically every game I play. <laughs> so finding out that I had no option but to follow the rules, well, suffice to say that I wasn't happy with this design choice. The point here is to express how the boss wasn't hard. I simply refused to do what I had to do in order to beat the boss. I personally use the Spectre throughout my Lies of P playthrough. The Spectre is a shadow that aids you during a boss battle, like summons in Elden Ring or the same summons in Dark Souls. It makes things easier, but not free. However, at the end of the game, you are faced with a question that can ultimately be interpreted as give up and finish the game or beat what is in front of you and finish the game. And you can't summon the Spectre here. So if you have been relying on it as your crutch for beating the game, you will now have to improve or give up. This of course has no real repercussions in your life and will eventually fade away just like lots of other memories you no longer remember you have forgotten. But for some people, for those who see their actions in something as meaningless as a game as a reflection of their true selves, this meaningless action, this unimportant decision, is just as valuable as anything else in their lives. They keep going. For hours on end, they fight the same boss, they learn the patterns, they become one with their weapon of choice, they say hateful things and curse the game they truly hate at that moment, just to eventually beat it and sing its praises. Some people call this behavior stupid, and so do I. After all, what else could you call it other than sheer stupidity? But people like that, people like us, people who simply can't stop even if it's just a video game, they keep going, because the only option other than beating what is in front of them is to not do it. They have to get good, and they eventually do. And these games are also designed to help you through this hell that is becoming better. Dark Souls offers the Fire Link Shrines, with music to soothe your heart and help you calm down and recover your desire to continue. Elden Ring has an amazing open world, in which, if you can't beat a boss, you can go somewhere else and do something different, until the sights and sounds have cooled you down and now feel comfortable enough to go back and try again. Lies of P is more like Dark Souls, it offers Hotel Krat, where you can simply sit down and chill, maybe play the records you've obtained so far and listen to either a soothing song, the sad notes resembling the feelings of a girl, or maybe what sounds like the hopes of a genius inventor. Whatever you may be playing, whatever you may be facing, all these games offer a safe place, a place resembling what you would call home. Even in these desolate lands filled with hostility, Yes, even when the entire world is against you, there will always be home. Throughout the internet, you can find people talking about how one of these games saved their lives, got them through difficult times, or helped them get back up. But with so many people crying about their difficulty and how unfair they are, how come there are also those who are saved by them? Just like anything in life, the rewards for a difficult challenge can only be understood by those who got through it. The reward for many is pain. Remember the infamous Quantum Television? He called people who like these games, and I quote, masochists and victims of abuse. And I'd assume that we can all agree how stupid this is, but also recognize where something like this could come from. Let's say you play a Souls game for the first time ever, not knowing anything about them and having played other easier games. If this is the case, in your mind, if one day you can't beat the game, you can lower the difficulty. The game offers a way out, and since you play games to avoid reality, this easy way out when faced with a challenge is a heaven's sent feature. Then, you play a Souls game for the first time ever, you get to the first boss and you realize the game is too difficult for you. However, this time, there is no easy way out, you can't just lower the difficulty. This game can't make you forget what you hate, it makes you face it, you either get good or quit. This isn't escapism, this is a test to your own strength. Whichever method you used to beat the games, people will always judge. But remember, whether you went at it for hours until you improved, until you obtained an OP build, or until you leveled up like crazy, in the end, you also beat it. As long as you don't cheat, the challenge was beaten by your own efforts. Those who didn't beat the challenge won't know the satisfaction, 
oh and let's not forget there will also be those who diminish others struggles by saying something like oh it took you that long i buried in a single try with level one with only fists while blindfolded and my hands tied inside a burning furnace it's easy you you suck don't forget Albert Einstein could call 99.9999% of humanity idiots simply because they didn't do what he did. But then, Da Vinci could call Einstein stupid for not being able to paint as well as he did. And then, Mozart could shit on Da Vinci for not being good at music. Point being, everyone is an idiot if you highlight their struggles and the things they can't do, and not their accomplishments and what they have learned throughout their lives. After all, we are humans, and we have limited time, so know that you will forever suck at multiple things, but you can also always learn how to be good at a few things. And if you are already really good at something, don't forget, you also suck at many. And someone who sucks at what you can do might be good at multiple things which you have no idea how to do. These difficult games don't hold your hand. They don't allow you to take an easy route. They won't reward you for being bad or even for being good. It's just a challenge. And like any challenge, you could get lucky and have Malenia never use Waterfall Dance or be extremely unlucky and have her use it three times in a row, which happened to me one time. When something unlucky happens in life, people curse the world saying that if they were luckier, they could have done what they couldn't. And those who managed something near impossible due to their amazing luck tend to forget that even if they were good without that once in a lifetime luck they couldn't have done what they did well in these games if you got lucky once don't worry there are still many obstacles remaining before you truly beat the challenge these games just like anything else are difficult and just like anything else they are easy after so many hours of repetition and practice, just like in real life, people come to a realization. The wall that once blocked their way wasn't tough, it wasn't unbreakable. Even if at the moment it seemed like so and they felt hopeless, they now know the truth. The game wasn't hard, you just sucked at it. Getting OP builds is now faster and easier. You now know the most efficient way to level up fast. You are now accustomed to the pacing. You improved. You got good. And unlike real life, you can go back and retry what once felt like an impossible task. For many, myself included, games are an amazing way to forget about everything else. When I uploaded my Genshin critique, I felt depressed after seeing how it didn't explode into 8 billion views. However, the moment I started stream the next day and played some games, I simply enjoyed myself. If you play games for this reason and this reason alone, then Souls likes won't really become your next favorite thing. But if you feel like you don't have the strength to accomplish what you want or need, give these games a try. I recommend Elden Ring since I believe it's the best. Playing and beating these games won't solve your problems nor will they cure your depression. However, the taste of accomplishment, of self-improvement, knowing how it feels to overcome what seems like an impossible challenge might be the push that your life needs. Lots of people tell their tales of being saved by them. So maybe, just maybe, give them a try. Play them, level up, find your favorite build, beat every boss and reach the ending. And after you beat the game, make a new character and play again, you will realize that the game didn't become easier, you didn't just upgrade your weapons, your level didn't just go up. Go back and fight the same fights, you will realize your character didn't become stronger, you did.